You're live. I just want to pledge my undying love to my favorite national teammate <laughs> in the history of swimming, Jeff Kostoff. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing really well, Mel. You're famous for a lot of things, buddy. <laughs> uh, the Olympian, NC2A champion. Uh, it was, yeah, you guys, it was, when you were at Stanford, it was, it was the greatest day. Right? Yeah, we, had, we, had, we had a good time. So yeah, can't complain. Yeah, you can't complain. But we're also famous for going 416, 500 free in high school. Yeah. What year did you do that? 1983. So did you know, when, in 1983, when you touched the wall and saw 416, did that surprise you? Um, no, not really. I mean, it was it was my best time by a little bit, but not by a lot. So yeah, I mean, I knew I was capable of doing that. How long did that record last? The high school record lasted for about 30 years. 30 years. Yeah. Does anybody on the team, do any of these guys in the final set, did any of them know you were first 16? They actually all know. They all know. Because the other thing that's really cool is that Grant Schultz, like my record for CIF is still there. Grant Schultz last spring broke his 416 record. Of course, he went 412. But you know he killed it. But but you know, and so it's been really cool because he knew all along. He was he was really happy when I got hired at Stanford. You know, True was really happy about it. Both those guys actually communicated to me right after I was hired, and they were really excited about the prospect of me being there as their coach. And and I certainly love it because it's just you know there, I think there's a there's a level of understanding because of the events that we share and strategy and mindsets that it's just I, I really just like interacting with both of those guys because they're I mean they're they're two very different cats as far as swimming goes, but. But the, the competitiveness with both of them is pretty scary. Well, the 500 was pretty fun to watch. I mean, you know, we had some really good 200 IMs too, but the 500 having three guys go under our school record all at once was pretty exciting, especially when two of them are freshmen. So uh, a lot of, lot of good things to come. What went into that? How do, you, how, do you, how do you get to that place this early in the season? Well, I mean, they're very hardworking guys. And the thing that's really interesting about them, too, is they they all kind of train a little bit differently. Because True is kind of like your traditional hard-banging distance swimmer who wants to go more, more, more all the time. And Grant is really a middle distance, can swim distance, but can actually train like a sprinter. And then Liam's kind of in between. So having them go at each other at times is, is a lot of fun. And uh, it sometimes gets heated in workout too, but that's okay too. Clark's going to be tough in NC2A. Oh, for sure. What's going to be the difference for your team in that final? In March. I think I think in March we just have more time to do some good work. We've laid a good foundation here in the fall, but so there's some things that I want to get done in the next six to eight weeks. I think they're going to make a difference, especially with two incoming freshmen. There's some things that we can do to get sharper. I think the other thing too is this fall. This was the first real meet that we swam. We kind of went and did a half session up in the UOP where we just drove up, swam that day, and came back. And then we had a, a triple distance meet that's kind of some off distances or off events with. Um, Cal, but we haven't had any real meet where they even came close to suiting up or actually facing real scored competition and stuff like that. Um, we, we started coming down. We 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 had uh, we started training camp September 7th, and we kind of built up. By the end of September, we were at full speed, and then we worked really really hard all the way through about you know mid November, and then kind of it's kind of like you. I, I know with my guys, I hit my three peak weeks of, of hard work in the three weeks right before Thanksgiving. So in that weekend going into Thanksgiving, we kind of started to come down, and then we kind of coasted in across Thanksgiving. Of course, they have holidays and things like that, um, and dropped the yardage off a bit there. Um, but then with some of them, it's been it's been differentiated. Like with True, actually, I've had to keep him up a lot more, because he's he's going on from here to do the Short Course Worlds, and he's got to do a mile there, so we've kind of kept his volume up a lot higher. Well, Stanford's a great place, and uh, you know, like like any place that uh, that you leave for a long time and come back, it's going to be you know very much the same in a lot of ways. But it's also changed. I mean, there's there's a lot that's different about the campus um, and the area. Of course, I mean, you know, when I when I was going to school there, Silicon Valley wasn't quite Silicon Valley yet, and it, it now, of course is like the center of the universe for that kind of stuff. So it's pretty crazy being in that kind of environment. Um, but school-wise, campus-wise, it's the same kind of thing. And it's just really, it's a fantastic place to be. Um, it's a place I'm very comfortable with because I really like the whole concept of student athlete. You know, I've been a coach, I've been a teacher, and I'm just really into both of those roles. I, that's really what I like. And so being a college coach with these guys who are intellectually curious about a lot of things is just a lot of fun for me as well. I find it just a great environment.